Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 2. We will start with Taylor Series method as a numerical method for solving ODEs. So given our equation x prime equals to f as a function of t and x, and we consider x as a function of t, and the initial data is given at t0, x equals to x0. So we will be focusing on taking one step. Let's say um, t0 is given and we want to find an approximate value at t1 and we denote it by x1. So the rational is if you can take one step, then you can take many steps. So what we do would be um, write out Taylor expansion for this function x depending on t evaluate at t0 plus h and expand it at t0. And we have the following. x at t0 plus h expand at t0 is xt0 plus how far away you are from t0, which is h, times x prime at t0 plus and a half h squared times second derivative at t0, and so on and so forth. One can write out an, in a general summation form, and that will be the general m plus 1 term, m starting from 0 to infinity. So the idea is to truncate the Taylor expansion after m plus 1 terms and throw away all the rest and only use the first partial m plus 1 terms to approximate the function. So this gives us this approximation. So we see x at t0 is x0, and uh, x prime at t0, that's just f at t0 and x0. Then our job becomes now to find the higher derivatives, because they are now needed on the right-hand side. So let's first take a look at um, the arrow introduced in each step by um, truncating the Taylor series. So the exact value of x at t1 minus your approximate value x1, which you compute just by taking finite many terms, will be all the terms that you throw away, starting from k equals to m plus 1 to infinity. But hopefully these terms are very small, so they'll um, add up to be a small number. So by applying the Taylor theorem, which we learned in chapter 1, it says if this converges, it equals to exactly the dominating term, which is the first term here, and evaluated at some cosi, cosi lies between t0 and t1, the two points where you expand. Assuming now the m plus 1 derivative of x is a bounded quantity, then the, or the arrow is of order um, h to the power m plus 1. So, so this local arrow is of order m plus 1. Let's look at a few small numbers of m and see um, what method comes out. So let's um, put m equals to 1, and then in the Taylor series method, we will be taking two terms, and one is the first term, x0, and then is the second term, with x prime, which shall be multiplied by h. So plug in x prime equals to f, we get this iteration step. So is f x prime at t0 is f at t0 and x0. So this is the famous um, forward Euler step, which is the simplest method. So at time step k, one can have the general iteration, which will be xk plus 1 equals to xk plus h times the f at tk and xk. And then you would generally have a for loop and let k run from 0 and 1 to all the way to capital N minus 1 to reach xn. Okay, now let's look at um, m equals to 2. This means we will have to include an additional term comparing to m equals to 1. 
That term involves the second derivative of x and is multiplied by h squared and half. So we see we need to get an expression for this higher derivative. So to compute that, we notice that the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. And we plug in the first derivative, which is just f, and we see we need to differentiate f in t, where f is a function of two variables, where the first one is t and the second one again is a function of t. So we need to apply the chain rule for functions of multi variables. So if we do that, we will have f sub t first, plus, and then we have to differentiate f in x. And keeping in mind x depends on t, the chain rule says you have to put x prime. Then you know x prime is just f, which we can plug in. Now this gives us ft plus fx times f. Okay, so plugging this into the, the first equation, then we have our iteration. So that will be x0 plus h times f at t0 x0 plus and half h squared times this expression for the second derivative, but everything evaluated at t0 x0, t0 x0. And you can also write out the iteration at the general time step, step number k, and where k is the index for your for loop to go through all the time um, intervals, then we will have on the left hand side is x k plus 1, and on the right hand side all the x's will be evaluated at x k and t k. Well, one can see um, if you want even higher order Taylor series for m equals to 3 or 4, you just need to carry out more computations to obtain the higher order derivative of x, say x triple derivative. You will have to take this expression and differentiate it one more time in t. It gets big and heavy, but if f is nice and given and differentiable, you can always perform that. Alright, hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.